today's video we'll be looking at theory of production decisions. Now I already have a written post of this um, video on my blog so this video is to supplement that written post. Now when we say theory of production decisions what we're looking at <coughs> excuse me, is how um, firms take production decisions and they um, analyze how to increase their productivity where costs are too high things like that on a generalized level as opposed to looking oh in perfect competition this productivity and looking very specifically to market structure now why this is important is because at the end of the video when we look at product analysis we can generalize it and when we generalize it then we can make uh, predictions about whole world productivity because it's not specified to only monopolies and things like that we can make big big assumptions so it's important and it's a, a good analytical tool so first thing I want to start with the so-called product analysis now there's three concepts I want to introduce you to uh, before we start looking at their graphs and why this is important so we have total product marginal product and average product what do these mean well Total product is the maximum uh, attainable amount of output a firm can get from a given set of labor. So essentially total product is saying that for your 50 workers, the maximum amount of shoes you can make is 520, something like that. Whereas marginal product will look at for an additional unit of labor, how much is that additional unit of labor going to produce? One shoe, half a shoe, a quarter of a shoe, three shoes. What are they? What is that one additional amount of labor going to produce? And average product um, is on average how much does one unit of labor produce in, in this productivity for this specific firm? So now we're going to look at the graphs. So firstly, total product. Now total product is important because it also reflects the law of diminishing demand. Now, as you remember from one of my previous posts, the law of diminishing demand suggests that uh, when you recruit more labor, you get more and more productivity, your costs go down, then eventually you reach a point where from then on, costs suddenly get high and productivity goes down. And this is to do with diseconomies of scale, too much labour, you actually need a new plant, not just these variable um, inputs. So things like that. And this is a reflection on that because you're looking at how much the labour is going to achieve for your firm. So the curve goes a bit like this. On the horizontal axis, we have the labor um, quantity of labor employed and on the vertical dependent axis we have the total amount that's um, attainable for this um, set number of labor to achieve. So I've drawn a line here, a dashed one in the middle to separate the graphs because in the first half you can see a steep increase that as labor increases steeply the amount they can produce increases and this also implies, therefore, that marginal product uh, is high because you're recruiting more and more labor. Each additional one is adding a substantial amount to the total productivity. Then we have here sort of settled down and eventually going down. Now, this is showing here that as labor now, after this crucial point, increases, the quantity that they produce is suddenly not as much as they were producing before and eventually it's going to go down. I haven't drawn on the graph but it's slow down and eventually it'll go back down. And this is because of the law of dim uh, diminishing demands and things like that. So this is why uh, product analysis is good because it's encompassing some key microeconomic um, uh, principles. So now the second graph, um, I think I'll just get another colored pen because it's not very clear. Um, this graph here, which has like two kind of curves, is the marginal product. Now what it's saying is what we just said with total product, that as labor on the horizontal axis increases, the amount the labor can produce on the vertical uh, axis increases, 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 until it reaches a point where it slows down and eventually decreases. An average product, on the other hand, it's just an uh, upside down parabola that labor increases, you reach a point in the middle and decreases. Now this point in the middle of uh, average product and marginal product is where they meet, they meet right here. 
Now this is the optimal level for productivity for firms and the reason why this is is because on this side so let's just so that you can see it I'll draw it like that on the left hand side of the curve you will see that marginal product is greater than average product now what that means is that amount and additional per employee is bringing to the firm is more than on average what one worker produces so you want to recruit that person and you want to increase productivity so you keep recruiting re recruiting recruiting until you get to this maximum point of average product equals marginal product on the other hand uh, on the other hand side you will see that average product is actually greater than marginal product and this is not good because if on average what a person is making is more than what the additional employee is going to bring then your costs are just going to go up so you do not want to recruit these additional employees you want to decrease productivity you want to lay off some workers until you get to this optimal point now we get to least cost production so with product analysis is very much how much can labor produce with least cost um, product production analysis is basically um, looking at different input because labor is not the only input it's looking at labor and capital and what are the different um, combinations of labor and capital you can have to achieve the same level of output so it's saying I want output 300 now for that 300 you can either have two capital units and five labor units or five capital units and one labor unit you can do whichever so it's looking at the different sets and then you load that and lay them out on a graph and you can choose which one suits you so it's good because then firms can say oh but we already have five workers so this will suit us the best <coughs> now this works like demand and supply there are two graphs involved so I will just um, draw them out because it makes more sense. So the first curve is called the isoquant curve and on the horizontal axis you have capital and on the vertical axis you have labour. Now in this situation neither one is dependent on the other, it's just independently looking out at the different um, sets you can have. So how it looks, the isoquant curve, is like this. And what it's saying is is that to achieve that certain amount of production as capital uh, increases you have to lay off labour to maintain that um, same productivity output range and you can have several of these and these would make an isoquant map but that's not so important what is important though is that the slope now the slope of this curve we call the marginal rate of technical substitution and all this essentially means is for that, if we were to lose that one unit of capital, how much additional units of labour would we need to maintain output at a stable constant rate? There is another curve involved, because there's two. And as I said, like with demand and supply, where they intersect, that's your optimal equilibrium. And that's how you work out. So in the ESO uh, quant curve, you keep you want you look at a constant um, level of output and you look at the different inputs which achieve it. The next curve is called ESO cost, and what it is essentially doing is you're saying, oh, I want um, my cost to stay at three hundred. What are the different units of labour and capital? Well, capital costs this much, labour costs this much. So if you're gonna have three capital, you can only have two labour. Blah 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 blah, and you get a downward sloping curve like that. So now you can see at this point and this point where they intersect it is where your cost is at your constant your chosen level and your output is also at your chosen level so you've got an ideal situation you've managed to achieve them both and you know that you can either go for this which is more capital based this which is more labor based and depending on the nature of your product you can choose so ESO least cost um, production um, theory is very good because you are setting out what you want and you're looking at the equilibrium and you're getting it out. Now quickly we're running out of time um, just to finish on 
Adam Smith, why do I want to talk about him? Because he talks about labour, he talks about division of labour, specialisation of labour, essentially to increase pro uh, production, um, you need to specialise labour. That's what he says and he's contributed greatly. And then I was just going to quickly mention Thomas Malthus and I was going to talk a bit about his formula for total production. Now what he says is that population goes exponentially, so it's always doubling, whereas um, food and resources, they, go, they grow arithmetically arithmetically so they go um, uh, by one like they go up and land is constant land just does not increase unless we're going to move to another planet or something it doesn't and because of the diminishing law of labor eventually we're all going to starve and die because production will never ever be able to achieve um, uh, be a reflection on increase in labor so he his formula is this that land times by square root of labour equals uh, production and why this is important is because you'll see all he's saying is that land is constant but we have to square root labour because of diminishing law of, uh, uh, dim law of diminishing returns and um, yeah because of law of diminishing returns and as we saw with the marginal uh, product analysis things like that we have to square root labor and this is the downfall and this is the reason why eventually we're all going to starve out and our resources are going to and our population is going to outstrip the resources thank you for watching please visit my blog